Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.6 and Razbam Simulations M2000C Mirage Module. Welcome to tutorial 9, TAF Datalink. Uh, TAF, which stands for Teleaffichage, I think, <laughs> is a, a GCI data link. It's basically a data link that allows ground stations that are equipped with a radar to provide target information uh, directly into the VTB in the Mirage. Uh, so this is quite a handy system. It allows you to intercept a target uh, without the need to actually use voice on the radio. You can also leave your radar in silent if you would like to do a silent intercept. And um, ad additionally, it uh, transmits uh, rules of engagement information to you as well, letting you know whether it's safe to fire upon a given target based on the position of friendly aircraft relative to it. So, uh, without any further ado, let's jump into the cockpit and get set up. Okay, so here we are in the cockpit of the Mirage. Uh, we're all ready to get going. What I'm going to do for starters, actually, is put the radar into silent so that we're not uh, distracted by that. We'll do a completely silent approach. And then also we're interested in this radio here, uh, this UHF radio. Uh, we need to put it into uh, mode F1. This allows the radio to be used for the data link. Note that this now means we cannot use this radio for voice communications. Oh, we got some beeps. Very interesting, so that lets us know it's in data link mode. Next, we need to go down to this tuning box here, uh, and this allows us to set the, uh, the channel that we want to make use of for the data link system. So if we bring up the knee board, and we go back one, oh no, actually it's not back, it's forwards a few pages, uh, we will eventually get to a page for, let me see here, uh, TAF GCI channels. And we can see here that we have a ground station at Larnaca. If I go into the F10 map and zoom out a little bit, there is indeed an early warning radar positioned here at Larnaca. That's all we need. We can actually take target information from any early warning radar or SAM. So it's on channel one. So I need to put myself into channel one, wait a few moments, and uh, we should be ready to start using the system at that stage. Uh, we're supposed to get a green light. Um, I'm not sure, there we go, test is actually working. Uh, I'm not sure if the green light is actually working right now, because uh, I, I haven't had it work, although the system does seem to work. We then need to have the aircraft into, in some kind of uh, air-to-air mode. Uh, it works with policing mode, or alternatively we can select a weapon. In this case, we're going to simulate a civilian intercept. So we're going to go policing mode, and then there is an, option, an option TAF. This is here with any air-to-air weapon selected. So basically if we're in air-to-air -air mode this is available. I can turn that on and then I'm immediately going to pause the simulation and go over the symbology we have. Um, so the first thing to note is that we get a symbol T. That's the TAF data link symbol and it's in yellow. That's the same color that we're using for uh, non-radar return symbology on the radar normally. So things like the the DO mode or the ghost uh, contacts they're already in yellow. So, uh, in any case, that's the data link symbol. We only ever get one symbol at a time. Uh, we've got the direction of travel, we have the aspect, and then we have the standard target information across the top for the most part. So, they're currently flying at Mach 0.7, their heading is 270, our closure rate is 725 knots, and they're flying at 20,000 feet. The Mirage always uses hundreds of feet in its altitude. Um, information. One additional bit of information that we get here though is the group size. So it's telling me that this is a group of four aircraft. Uh, then at the bottom left it lets us know that RAZ mode is active, so that means this is a kind of a synthetic target, not a radar target. Uh, and then we get intercept information. So the intercept information is this correct. This is the heading that the GCI is telling us to fly. Uh, and we also have this line. We could actually just fly to uh, line up the vectors. Uh, our commanded speed, we're, we're told that we're to fly at Mach 1.2, and our commanded altitude, we're told to fly at 24,600 feet in order to intercept. Now you'll note that this is not directly towards the target, this is an intercept uh, vector which will allow us to safely intercept the target without too much hassle. If we wanted to, we could use the theta switch down to actually cancel this and remove all the symbology. Um, but uh, we're not going to do that right now. We're actually going to use the symbology. 
One last part of the system is the rules of engagement. That's displayed on the HUD. Currently here we have LIB, uh, that means uh, Libre, or free to fire, effectively. Uh, we will get that indication whenever there are no friendly aircraft within 20 nautical miles of the data link target. Alternatively, this might display IFF. That means that we are cleared to engage as long as we first IFF the target. Uh, another possibility is VIS for visual. That means that we need to do a visual ident. And then the last one is INT, enter D. Uh, I think you pronounce that, I'm not sure. Uh, and that's hold fire. That means do not fire and under any circumstances. Uh, and the conditions for these are, um, you're free to fire if there are no friendlies within 20 nautical miles. If there are friendlies within five to 20 nautical miles, you need to IFF. If there are friendlies within two to five nautical miles, you need to visually identify. And if there are friendlies within two nautical miles, then you must not fire. Uh, you're just not allowed. Uh, but in this case, the friendlies that I have on this map are further away, and so we have complete weapons free. Uh, but you'll note that I'm doing this like you would a civilian intercept. So my master arm is off and policing mode is on, no weapons are selected, and so there, there can be no accidental uh, weapons release in this case. So uh, let's continue the intercept and see what this looks like. I'm going to take the aircraft out of pause, and then the first thing I'm going to do is go burner, I'm going to climb, and I'm going to turn onto my intercept heading. So I've been told to climb to 24,000 feet, I've been told to achieve Mach 1.2 in order to intercept um, you know, as efficiently as possible. There we go, I'm on heading, and I'm climbing and accelerating. So let's see if we can get into a position to visually... Although we actually have weapons free, I'm going to fly this like a civilian intercept and just try and get visual on these guys. Oh, right, uh, we're now told to descend. We're given the command 22,700 feet. Let's uh, start descending now. It always wants you to come down from above, so it's going to tend to get you to climb first and then descend. It's now saying down to 223. Let's accelerate that descent. That's more like it. And we've to continue descending. We're at about the right speed now. So I'm going to come out of Burner momentarily. We'll probably slow down a little. Getting pretty close. I'm just going to bump down the range just to make this a little bit easier. Can level out here. Yeah, we're pretty much on the commanded altitude, although we're a little bit slow. And target should be approaching from the right any moment now. Visual. Visual. Okay, let's get the speed down and try to intercept this. This is going to be very difficult because I'm in 2D mode. <laughs> it's never easy to do this in 2D. But you saw, we got right on target and I still... Oh, there we go. We're basically flying formation with him now. Uh, I still have my radar off. So we are right on this target aircraft. And he would have had no RWR indications uh, that we were that we were on him. So pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, and still he's reading 0.7. Oh, there we go. He's doing evasive now. So we've done enough to spook him at this stage. So there you go. Uh, that is how the system works. It's very, very simple. Very easy to use. And uh, in order to set it up in a mission, all you need to do is actually have a ground station with a radar uh, positioned on the map. And then on your knee board, you will see uh, those, um, those channels appear. I'm actually going to see if I can get into a proper intercept with this guy here. There we go. Got a circle around him. <laughs> uh, he's he's getting away now. He's getting away now. So, uh, in any case, if I'd actually done the intercept maneuver correctly, I could have appeared on his left hand side and done a visual ident, maybe flared off at him, scared him a little bit. Uh, but sadly, I, I messed up a little bit. But that doesn't matter. Uh, that that uh, shows you how the system works. And as I said, we can theta down, or is it theta up? Hmm, okay, it's actually not clearing. Oh, I have to clear each one individually, it was counting them down. Yeah, and it keeps it keeps giving me a new one because there, there are still aircraft here. So, that's fine. 
that's fine. We'll leave it at that. So, uh, yeah, uh, quickly just to go over how that's set up again. Uh, your UHF radio needs to be an F1 setting. And your, uh, your data link control here needs to be in the correct channel for the particular ground station you want to use. At that stage, you'll hear a series of tones, and if you're in any air-to-air -air mode, whether it's policing or anything else, you'll get the option for TAF. I'll just demonstrate that we could do this in armed mode. So if I deselect policing mode, this is cleared. I, I can clear my symbology. If I, for example, selected the 530, actually TAF was still on because I'd left it on. Oh, you have to actually deselect TAF to be able to clear this. That's what it was. So yeah, with TAF selected, you get symbology. Uh, and that's how that works. Uh, and you can even switch it into the CADR mode if you wanted to track things that are behind you as well. Pretty fancy. Pretty fancy. So yes, uh, I hope you all enjoyed that. That was a, a quick demonstration of TAF mode. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option of further supporting uh, the channel by becoming a member of Deep Hack's ground crew. You can do that by clicking the join button below for a small monthly fee. Thank you very much to those of you who've already done so. Big shout out to Harish Rajan, Byron Farrow, Storm Kimbari, Channel Wright, Mangash, JR Walker, Chandler Hedgevald, Drift Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Frantic Stone, Bread, Tier Zero, Erdinker Tan, Belly Tapani Corpicanas, Tiger Moto, Sean I Am 81, Charts, and Pink Floyd. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.